This is one place where the book lets me go in to some disease state, into some pathophysiology. So basically, if our pH moves outside of our normal, we can develop what's called acidosis or alkalosis. Ignore the picture for a minute, we'll come back to this, okay? So acidosis, um, this low blood pH, right, or lots of hydrogen, can form in a few different ways. So we can get a respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis or metabolic <clears throat> acidosis. Actually true on alkalosis as well, it's either respiratory or metabolic. Metabolic. And really, if you, it tells you the cause of the acidosis or alkalosis. So respiratory acidosis, for example, is going to be caused when there is a problem at the lung. Now let's, let's think through this one together. What kind of problem here would lower pH? Would we be breathing off lots of CO2 to lower pH or would we be um, holding our breath and holding on to CO2. Hit pause if you need to think about that one for a minute. But what we'll see, right, is remember this is a reversible reaction. So if we start accumulating CO2, we'll push the equation to the right here and that gives us more hydrogen. Did you get it right? Okay, so respiratory acidosis is caused by hypoventilation breathing at too slow of a rate. And so you might see this with a patient who's on a ventilator that's not turned up um, properly, um, maybe someone with a brain injury, right, those sorts of things. But respiratory, respiratory acidosis is when there's hypoventilation, so the problem is here at the lung and it's adding lots of acid to the blood. Okay, you can also get metabolic acidosis. The most common way to think of it, the easiest one, is going to be when you have byproducts um, of cellular metabolism, right? So something like lactic acid, right? That would be hard to get that much lactic acid to really go into acidosis. Um, the other one, the one we see more commonly, I already mentioned, keto acidosis. Again, we mostly see that in diabetics. Again, their cells aren't getting glucose in, so they're trying to break down lipids or proteins, and ketone bodies are the byproduct, right? And that's making it acidic. Um, this is also possible in starvation, right? No glucose, trying to break down fats um, or proteins. Mm. Other ways to get metabolic acidosis would be something like if your kidney isn't um, working properly. So something like glomerulonephritis, when you blow out that filtration membrane, right? That's, remember, we said that's not uncommon after a streptococcal um, infection. That can prevent uh, us from actually adjusting our acids and bases as we should. Okay. Um, I was thinking of something else with the kidney. Oh, diuretics. Right, particularly diuretics that are trying to oppose aldosterone, right? Because remember with aldosterone, we're usually reabsorbing sodium, and often we do that in exchange for potassium. But if you have lots of acid, if you have a low blood pH, we'll do that exchange with hydrogen instead. But if you're on that diuretic, it shuts off that ability to expel um, those hydrogen ions. And last but not least, bicarbonate loss. So this is going to be the result of something like diarrhea. 
So bicarbonate that's in the intestines, and remember, the, the pancreas is producing that alkaline buffer, right, that's trying to decrease um, the acidity of the chyme coming from the stomach into the small intestine. So we know we're putting bicarbonate into the GI tract. Normally that gets reabsorbed, but in cases of diarrhea, where you're just losing that fecal matter so quickly, you could have loss after loss after loss of bicarbonate, right? And that could put you into a situation of metabolic acidosis, right? So anything in metabolism that leads to a low pH is gonna fall over here. Okay, before we think about alkalosis, what does the body do about this? Now, in the case of respiratory acidosis, something is going wrong at the lung, the lung cannot help us, right? And so we're gonna rely on the kidney to respond to that acidosis. And we absolutely see us, see our kidney secreting hydrogen, reabsorbing bicarbonate, right? Here's our bicarbonate being generated. Um, and so the kidney is gonna do its best. The kidney's not as fast. Um, the kidney can often not completely fix those problems, okay? We are going to have to take care of the underlying uh, reason. You're gonna have to fix the ventilator in this case. Okay. When we're dealing with metabolic acidosis, again, if the kidney isn't functioning properly, the kidney can't fix it, right? That is gonna rely completely on the lungs. But in all these other cases, we'll see both the lungs and the kidney attempting to compensate, right? When we think about respiratory compensation, when there's additional hydrogen, right, from these ketone bodies, um, from bicarbonate loss, anything like that, what we need to do with um, that hydrogen is essentially exhale it. So you actually alter your respiratory rate to expel more CO2, right? Because I just, I always write out this equation and I'm drawing arrows. If we start expelling CO2, we need to refill this pot by breaking carbonic acid apart. But as we're losing carbonic acid, the way to refill that pot, right, is by bringing those two together to form carbonic acid. So we're pulling the hydrogen out by going, right, so increased respiratory rate, increased respiratory rate lowers PCO2. I like the equation, a lot of people like this idea that um, a decrease in PCO2 Make sure I do that right. These are inversely related. A decrease in PCO2, so breathing it off, is going to, there we go, lead to an increase in pH, right? I mean, notice what got us in trouble in the first place was a increased PCO2, right? We weren't breathing it off, and that led us to a lower pH. So for some folks, they just like to memorize that PCO2 and pH are the inverse. For me, I'm always drawing these arrows and trying to see where the equation's going. Either way is fine. So in metabolic acidosis, the lung is getting involved as well um, as the kidney, right? Same thing, we'll go ahead and secrete that hydrogen, reabsorb our bicarbonate. And since I forgot to mention it, don't forget that those other buffer systems are there to get things started, um, to kick things off. Okay, so this is um, our body's response to acidosis. Again, respiratory and metabolic, other than the fact that respiratory acidosis cannot be fixed by the lung. Okay. On to alkalosis. Okay. So alkalosis is the opposite problem, but we still have respiratory and metabolic causes for this, right? So respiratory alkalosis, again, think through this. How are we going to increase the pH? How do we have lots and lots, sorry, <laughs> increase the pH, low amounts of hydrogen, we need to get rid of it. Right? So respiratory alkalosis would be caused by hyperventilation. 
right? So it could be someone um, in a panic. In fact, that respiratory alkalosis can actually lead uh, to fainting, right? So someone who's hyperventilating may pass out. And that actually gets rid of the problem for us, right? Um, again, something like a ventilator could be tuned incorrectly. Metabolic alkalosis, um, I think a, a good example there of where your blood pH might climb is through excessive vomiting. Now, if you think back to the last time you were like super totally sick, you had that gut bug, you were puking your guts out, you can puke five, six, I don't know how many times, right? Think about it, without going into metabolic alkalosis. So this is really severe. This could be something like an alcohol poisoning, um, hyperemesis gravidarum, morning sickness, to the extreme, right? Um, vomiting enough that you could actually change that blood um, pH. Because remember, the blood, uh, sorry, the, the stomach acid is formed through our same equation here. Okay, and so remember, this is going to the stomach as hydrochloric acid, this bicarbonate is going to the blood, but if you puke and you get rid of that stomach acid, we're gonna do this again to make more. You puke, you still reabsorb the bicarbonate, right? So you can see how over time you get more and more and more bicarbonate and that's how you'd end up with metabolic alkalosis. Now, we have, rest, we have buffers. First step, we have buffers that'll jump in um, and try to, to help mitigate this problem. And then we're looking towards the lung and the kidney. Now, in this case, the respiratory compensation, again, if it's respiratory alkalosis, the lung's the problem. The lung is not saving your butt. We're gonna rely um, on the kidney, right? The kidney, in a period of alkalosis, the renal compensation is now to, to reabsorb that hydrogen and secrete bicarbonate. Yes, go kidney, right? Bring in the pH back down by providing that hydrogen. In something like a metabolic alkalosis, we'll see both the kidney and the lung working. Again, the lung is faster, much more efficient at this, so let's take a peek at what happens here. So in metabolic um, alkalosis, we have and this is maybe a little confusing the way this is drawn, right? But we, we're removing that hydrogen. We have low levels of hydrogen, and that's why we have such a high um, pH. Yep. pH is confusing. It's okay if you have to stop and think or you have to write it out, right? So in alkalosis, we're removing all this hydrogen. Let's go with like the vomiting example, right? So the lung says, okay, I know what to do. If I lower the respiratory rate, if I hold my breath, that CO2 will build up. And as I build up CO2, I can make more carbonic acid, which will then dissociate and give us hydrogen to lower the pH, right? To fix the problem. The lung is pretty cool, right? Then again, the kidney jumps in, we reabsorb hydrogen, and we secrete bicarbonate, right? So metabolic acidosis, sorry, respiratory or metabolic acidosis alkalosis, buffers lung kidney, right? We have three different ways really um, where the body is trying to step in. Um, you really want to get yourself familiar with kind of which way this equation is moving. We'll make you practice some. Um, and then also this idea of what am I reabsorbing versus what am I secreting at the kidney, right? But we just talked about that in chapter 26, that the kidney has this really uh, important role.